blue run of the Nellon Park. Out walking Bella this morning. The, uh, I almost said the Tioga. The Bounder. <laughs> Haven't named her yet. And Bella out snooping. Come on, come on. This way. Come on, this way. Sorry for all the camera shake. <laughs> Blue run of the Nellon Park River access. Wait a minute. Pets, alcohol, swimming, and fishing are prohibited within this area. Oh no, Bella. Come on, walk this way for a while. Okay. We're... What did I say in the last video? It's going to get us up to speed on where to start on that. Let's walk back over here. I'm going to... Actually, we've been out walking for a little while now. Maybe it's time to put Bella away. Bella, 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 Bella. Bella. What do you say, Bella? What do you say, girl? Huh. It's a nice morning here. It's a little cool this morning. It's a little bit cool this morning, but it's good. Ah. Okay. Ready? Let's go. Yeah, I think we're along the, uh, where are we at? We're along the, uh, Rainbow River. We're going to have to check, we're going to have to investigate more of this Rainbow River thing out. It looks pretty nice from what I've seen. Just got a little peek of it. We'll get to that. This RV thing. I should, I guess very briefly, I should, I'll show you a picture or two of the, uh, the RV that originally brought me down to Florida that fell through. It had been a perfect replacement for the old Miss Tioga. It was one foot shorter. It was supposed to only have 42,000 miles on it. It was just, it was nice. The roof, the walls, the, structurally, it was the inside was nice. All the upholstery, the seats, it was nice. It had an onboard generator. I'm thinking this is perfect. But we got to looking at it. Take us off. So, as I got to looking more, I noticed, you know, the tires all look low. And even the old tires that were on it were supposed to be minimum of 60 pounds. And he had, he had put two new ones on it. Being newer tires, they were newer tire technology. <laughs> they were supposed to have 80 pounds in them. Well, not a one of them had more than 40. And the front two only had like 25 or so. So all the tires on it were low. And actually, the front ones were dry rot. Anyway, that's that can be expected. Out buying a used RV, it may need all new tires. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was two quarts low on oil. The radiator was, was real low. Like, uh, somebody's not taking very good care of this thing. So the guy, but all that considered, it, you know, it was all just a real nice RV. So he aired the tires up, put oil in the engine, popped off the radiator, took it for a test drive. And it had a vibration in it that... You know, the faster you went, kind of the worse it got to a point, and then it kind of tapered off a little bit, but it never went away. So we got back, and I crawled underneath looking at it and realized the drivetrain, it had to have been a, something in the drivetrain, the drive shaft's vibrating because the carrier bearing was bad in it, and the, the rear differential was, seal was leaking. And those are not typically... And there was two other items. Those are typically not things that wear out in just 42,000 miles. Maybe 142, but not 42. 
So I was convinced that the odometer on it didn't have the extra digit. You couldn't tell, you know, it didn't, when it turns over to 142, that's, that digit's not there. So it still said 42. You know, older vehicles, you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, this vehicle, as nice as it is, is getting too late in its life. With 142,000 on it. You know, talking engine, transmission. You know, how much life was left in those. So I decided to pass. I mean, the guy was offering to, well, maybe I'll have these things repaired. Uh, you know, within the, the following week. That was a weekend. He thought, Monday I'll get it in the shop and get this looked into a little better. I still just decided against it. Then I got this bright idea. So I'm back on Craigslist looking. And I'm seeing all these, looking for a Class C. And they're just, they're just hard to find, at least here in Florida. For anything reasonable. But there's, I'm seeing all these Class A's. And see, there's an abundance of them. So it affects the market, it affects the price, you know. Uh, you get a lot more for your money buying a used Class A. You know, there's a lot of them out there listed for, you know, only so much and only so much mileage on them. They're gonna, you know, I could get more for my money if I wanted to go big. So that's, so I started looking at the Class A's. And I looked at this one oddball one. It was, <laughs> but it looked so well built. And the pictures, I mean, it, you know, it looked real nice inside and out too. Relatively low mileage. But it was more like a spaceship, kind of the way it was built. There was more buttons and switches inside. I went, I thought, I don't know. It had a tandem axle. I thought, I'll go look at it. Then with all those switches, most of them didn't work. And they weren't labeled to what they were even for. And the lady was saying, well, at some point, somebody worked on it, did this and did that. Now, uh, that works differently. To run that, you have to have this off and this this way. And then you can run that. And, you, know, you, just, you know what? Somebody's messed with that. and It just sounded like a... I don't want to get involved with that. I want something that, you know, 90% everything worked. <laughs> you know, or better. The way it should, the way it was designed. Somebody hasn't hacked into it. So... If you're in the market for an RV, new or used, you should be aware of some things. You know, the new is easy. Realize what you're getting into. Unless you have the cash to pay for it, financing, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of years. You've committed yourself to a lot of labor, a lot of hours, and paying Mr. Banker back for all that money he lent you to buy that. You know, they finance those out to like 20 years. You know, like that. 100,000 new start starting the class A's the class C's even started 60 so and even that if you buy brand new okay you don't have to worry about mechanical things like the you know tires and brakes you know all that's new but if you follow any RV forums uh, You'll see a lot of those, even brand new ones. Sometimes their first year or two, there's a number of visits back in the dealer, you know, for warranty work. And so you might not get to use it very much, as much as you'd like through the first year. And you always find out what's wrong with it. Well, it's RVing season. You know, that's the time you go out, no, this ain't working, and that's not working, and you got to take it to the shop. You know, just that time of year when you want to be using it. So that's kind of frustrating. So that's the uh, sort of thing with new ones. Used RVs, it comes down to this. To me, it doesn't, I don't care what year it is. That, you know, that's not what really determines its age. You know, it's the mileage. It's how, how, how old is it mechanically? You know, I don't care if it's 30 years old, but if it only has, you know, 10,000 miles on it, <laughs> okay. There's brand new ones that have 10,000 miles on it in the first year and way more. So if it's not really worn out, that's mechanically young. So uh, 
So being used, you don't know how the previous owner cared for it. Uh, they may have had it serviced regularly and had breaks down when it should. And um, It's doubtful he put brand new tires on it just when he's getting ready to sell it. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be... I knew both when I bought the Tioga and when I bought this that there are going to be some things it's going to need. I'm going to want it checked out so that I know. I don't care what the salesman or the previous owner said. You know, I'm going to want to have the uh, I'm going to want to have the brakes looked at. I want to know when I'm out in you know in mountain country that, or if somebody pulls out in front of me or something, I would know I want to be able to get this stopped you know as quickly as it can stop. I found a nice shop in Inglis, Florida, called Beasley Tire and Auto. And it just looks like a typical tire shop, but you know, in this region, they've done their share of RVs. They're very knowledgeable, friendly, professional. Uh, they went through and serviced this RV. Uh, you know, I'm satisfied. They did a good job at it. We took the back wheels off. We found out this has four wheel disc brakes. And it turns out that those back brakes, they were just cooked. They were overheated and coming apart, uh, the brake pads anyhow. Somehow the rotors had survived. Um, and the calipers were also just in bad shape. So it's got brand new brake pads, brake calipers. Now, I've never seen brake pads fried this bad. Okay, see these? When they took the, pulled the calipers off, these things just came apart in pieces. There's, there's another piece just fell off. See all that? Somehow, the rotors survived in pretty, pretty well. And they, they look, surprisingly, they look good. So the front suspension was a little different. Uh, I mean, whoever had this in the hills and <laughs> burnt them brakes up like that it was bad enough that they should have done them all but they here we go when we go to the part it had brand new calipers and pads on it uh, and hoses and those brakes were new but they didn't bother to these those rotors did need done they were just glazed really bad and um, they were you know pitted real bad so we took those front rotors off remachined them We'll put the rotors back on and re-grease re the, uh, the front wheel bearings, so that was good. They put the new, uh, those new calipers and pads back on. That got that, uh, that front end taken care of. And while those tires were off, I knew there was a bounce in the front end. They actually tried. Those tires, the old tires weren't real bad looking, uh, but from sitting a long time, they gotten out of shape and it created a bounce. So. They did try rebalancing those tires. They were out of balance a little bit. They tried to, uh, they tried to save me a little bit of money. And uh, they rebalanced them and we put, the, uh, put them back on. And it didn't help. They, they, still, uh, they, they still had bounce. So they were actually deformed and not, uh, the tires were out of shape. So I ended up putting two brand new tires on it as well. The front, uh, then we had the whole, the whole underneath uh, lubricated, the rear differential. Uh, was still full of grease. This drive shaft has two carrier bearings and five universal joints. <laughs> so they all had grease fittings, so all the universal joints got greased. Uh, the transmission fluid, that looks like it had been serviced too. The fluid was all nice and red. It was on a full mark. Uh, we changed the engine oil. It holds 10 quarts of oil. <laughs> so. 1030 synthetic blend oil, 10 quarts of that, a filter, and the whole front suspension grease too. The guy commented, he said, there's a ton of grease fittings under that. So this whole, the whole works, the whole underneath's been serviced, uh, repaired where necessary. All in all, with the rear brake parts and front tires and all the labor. $1,444.68. Ouch. <laughs> but, you know, I got it for about a tenth of the price of a, a new one. 
So, and with 43,000 miles on it, you know, I think we're good to go for quite a while now. So that's the sort of thing you get into with when you buy used. You know, you got to be know that it's going to need some things. Uh, maybe a little, maybe a lot, but you should allow that extra. Just, just figure on doing some of that, uh, making sure your uh, the rig's right. Just be aware that you know to allow for that. It, it is used. There are going to be some things that maybe they're used a little, maybe they're used a lot and need replaced, but it's probably going to need some TLC. Uh, at least, you know, spend the money to have, uh, pay somebody to go through and check it out uh, to make sure things are right. You're going to want to at least spend the money and pay somebody to go through and, you know, make sure your brakes are safe, uh, if nothing else. And there's always other things too, like, uh, let's see, let me stop at the, let me stop at the, Auto parts store last night got some new wiper blades. These headlights are um, <laughs> that's probably the only good one. This one's got moisture in it, and I think has lost its silver. So plan on doing any night driving. And this one here, so, well, that one's pretty bad. It doesn't shine very good. And this one's not going to be around a whole long lot longer either because it's got moisture in it. So, the auto parts store only had three of the four headlights. <laughs> so, I bought the three. You know, the fourth one is supposed to be in just after lunchtime today. We're going to stop by and pick that up. But be willing to, if, if overall, if the main things are low, you know, it's low mileage. Basically, there's a lot of life left in it. It doesn't mean it's not still going to need some things to make it right, you know, so that you're good to go and can travel safely and problem-free, hopefully. So that sort of thing's been keeping me a little bit busy between, you know, working, uh, get my work done during the week, and, you know, running this thing to the shop and back. You know, it was in the shop a day and a half doing all that. Uh, continuing to move in. <laughs> And try to get some things put away. You know, I don't know why we're not still not getting the tour yet. Not because we're not because it's, I'm getting there. We're getting we're getting close. Getting some things put away. A little bit more tidying up, and maybe we'll have a look around inside. Here, I forgot that I forgot this before I you know before I finally got it. You know, we made the deal, and it was supposed to be. They're just going to run it through their safety checks and make, just go through and make sure everything was working. It's supposed to be three to five days to run it through their process and it's supposed to be ready. Well, then it turns out the uh, their refrigerator didn't work on in propane mode. And I specified, I made sure the guy knew, that's a must. You know, they might have plugged it in and said, oh, yep, everything's working. Come get it. I says, well... This thing may have been plugged in and sitting in a park for a long time. That's the story. Yeah, and it makes sense. But um, I says, now that I have it, you know, once I get it, seldom will it ever be plugged in. The things that work on propane need to be working. Particularly the refrigerator. They had problems with it. it wouldn't, uh, so they ordered a part. It was late getting in. And then when it did get in, it was the wrong one. So they ordered the right one, had it overnighted or second day air, whatever. It came in and anyway, by the time that had happened, you know, it was like 10 days and it was on a Friday. And I called him that morning. I says, I says, you know, I need to get to, if we're going to make this deal, I need it to happen. For, I need to have, I need it to happen today. That Friday, I says, we get through another weekend and then the next week. I says, now we're talking two weeks. I need an RV. I says, this comes down to this. My, the Tioga had a brand new refrigerator in it. I says, you guys have plenty of time to get that thing fixed. I says, uh, how about this? Talk to your boss. I'll buy it as is, but when I get it up, back up to the Tioga to be moving stuff over, I'm also putting 
my refrigerator in it. So the plus side is it has the new refrigerator from the Tioga in it. <laughs> Instead of one that, you know. So there was the delay in getting it. And when I did go down to pick it up, the guy that was working on it, he called off that day. So the owner and another guy had grabbed the guy's checklist. He says, oh, yeah, all stuff. yeah, that's good, that's good, all stuff's checked out. They're checking it, and, like, the stuff ain't right. It hasn't been checked. And so they're scrambling around for a couple of hours just going through, and they, they took care of a couple of things. And, and it didn't look like the deal was going to happen on that Friday. It still didn't look like it was going to happen. Finally, late in the day, everything checked out, you know. They had to do a propane leak down test to make sure they didn't have any, any leaks. And they couldn't find this one leak. Well, here's the guy that called off when he unhooked that other refrigerator. <laughs> he didn't tighten the thing back up. Anyway, it was a little stressful getting it to this thing to begin with. Now we're getting all moved in. Got it all mechanically ready to go. We're out and about. It's gonna be a beautiful day here in Florida. Life is good. <laughs> That's it. It's probably run long enough. Uh, we're gonna check out more of this Rainbow River here in uh it's good to be out again. I guess I just want to get this story, the story about getting this thing out there. This bird. Let's go see if we can check this bird out. Here, let's check this bird out. Here he comes. So, check back. I just want to get this story to tie or the uh, <laughs> story of this bounder out there and the fiasco it was getting it and getting it in shape and to this point so all right like comment subscribe share oh uh get notifications when new up uh when new videos have been uploaded there's that click on that little bell icon at the top right of your screen and uh we'll be back soon Until next time, I'll see ya. <laughs>